In this session, we're going to have a look at how we can create radio buttons. Radio buttons aren't a default object within Xcode, and you need to create them from some graphics. So I'm going to take you through the process on how to do that. In the example application, we're going to create the user interface for a currency converter, where you can enter in, say, the foreign currency, say it's $120 in, say, US. And then it will tell you in Australian dollars how much that would be, or if you're buying it in euros, how much it would be if you, if you were paying Australian dollars for that product. So let's get underway and work out how we can actually create these radio buttons. So I'm going to be starting a new Xcode project. It's going to be single app view, and it's for the iOS. Click on next. I'm going to give it an application name. I don't have a team. My organization name is Leon Marsden, and for organization identifier, I'll use Marsden Leon. I'm programming in Swift, and I'm going to use the storyboard interface. I've included the unit tests and also the UI tests, and I'm going to click on next. It's going to ask me where to save it. I've got a folder on my desktop called Xcode, and I'll save it in there. Now, once the application opens, I'm just going to resize this. Now I've got it to my working window. I'm then going to click on the main storyboard. So the first thing we're going to do is create the radio buttons. As I said before, they're not standard objects. So I would recommend opening up the Google browser. So what you want to do is search for radio buttons checked icon vectors. So we're looking for radio buttons that are checked. So they've got the circle colored in. Otherwise unchecked is where they're not colored in. We're looking for an icon and it's best to have vectors so it's scalable. So when you do that, you can then click on images and then you're looking for two images of the same. So save both of these to your desktop. So right mouse click, save image as and save it to your desktop. And also this image here, save image as. And also save this one to your desktop. Once you've done that, you can head back into your Xcode project. Now I've got my two images, I need to add them to my assets. So I'm going to click on the assets. And then I'm just going to drag the, the checked image across and let it go. You notice that I've labeled my radio button RBTN closed because it's been checked. And then I've got the other one is RBTN radio button and it's open, which means it's not checked. Now that I've got those two assets in and graphics in, we can then head back to the main storyboard. Now what we want to do is add a button. So up in the top right hand corner where I can add an asset, I now want to click on button and drag that onto the desktop. Over on the right hand side, this is where the button properties are. I want to remove its name as button. And what I would like to do is given an image and change that to RBTN open. So you notice now it's actually changed to my open image. So what I want to do now is hold down shift, grab the corner, scale that down to about 50. Now, if you want to do it a little bit quicker, you can just click on the ruler at the top and come in here and set it to width 50 and height 50. And then we can head back out rather than having to hold down the shift and scale it. Now you notice that at the top, it's now a button and it's custom. Its status config is default. So its default at the moment is in this open position. Now what I'd like to do is do its check position. So we're still using a custom, but I'm going to change its state while it's selected and go from default to select it. So now when this is selected, I want to pick the other image, which is RPTN closed. It will use the same scale of properties. If we check that now, you can see that it's still set to 50. And we can actually see it working if we head down and change the state to selected. So when it's selected, it looks like this. When it's unselected, it looks like that. Now the last thing we want to do is give it a name. So I'm going to change its tag name. Because it's a customized button, 
I want to use a few of these to be able to do multiple currency conversions. So rather than making them individual all the time, I'm just going to give it the tag name of one. So this is going to be the first one. The next thing I want to do is place a label on the screen. So I'm going to click on the ad and I'm going to drag out the label, place that next to the radio button. And I'm going to change this to be something like US dollars. So US dollars is this radio button here and the radio button and has a tag of one. So what we'd like to do now is put some constraints in. To do that, we need to select the object. Then we can head down to the constraints. I can undo custom, uncheck constraint to margins and just change this now to view current distance. And then also I can do the same to the left hand side. And then to make sure it stays the same size, I just constrain its width and height. And then I add those four constraints. You will see now in our view controller that we have constraints lists appearing now. There are some for the button and there's also some for the constraints of where they position. We also need to do the same for the US dollars. So once again, I'm going to go in, select it, uncheck here. We can then constrain the top and also we can constrain the distance from here to the side as well. If you want to keep the text box the same size, also do the width and height and add those constraints as well. Now when we view this in our simulator, you'll notice that the objects stay together. Now I'm going to stop the simulator and now we're quickly going to create another button. So once again, we're going to go through the whole process again, or you can just copy and paste it down. So we might go the quicker way and just copy and paste it down. So I'm going to select the two objects and I'm going to paste them. Now the problem about the objects, they also bring the previous constraints that they had above. So it's a good idea to head down to your constraints and click on reset to suggested constraints. This will then fix some of the constraints. Notice that this one here is going off the bottom of the screen. You can correct that by clicking on the object, then going back into constraints. Once again, selecting the top of the screen and then adding that to the current list. Also remember to constrain its size and add those three. So now it's got a constraint to the bottom and also to the top so it shouldn't move. What I would like to do is update this so rather than US dollars, we can change this to Euro. So this is going to be my Euro button. Now to define this between the US dollar button and the Euro one, we need to change its tag from one to two. So now they're two unique objects. We can also have a look when it's selected and you can see the dot is there and when the dot is not. So that helps us define those two buttons. Now before we start coding, it's a good idea that you check that your layout's correct and that all your constraints are in place. So to do that, run it through the simulator very quickly and you can see they're in the right positions. I don't get caught up with the colors and font size at this stage of my project. That's something I do after I finish my coding. All I need is the main objects. So I'm gonna stop the simulation at the moment if you get an error when you close it, it could be a constraint. Otherwise, it could be just an error coming back in because you've clicked on the buttons and it doesn't know quite what to do yet. So just click back on the main storyboard so you're here. What we're going to do now is open up the assistant so we can actually start coding. So the first thing we need to do is create our outlets. Now, outlets are very, very important. They allow you to talk to the screen. So this one here, if I click on it, and then hold down control, drag up onto line 13 into this space. It's gonna say you're creating an outlet. What is its name gonna be? In this case here, it's gonna be radio button, so R, B, T, N, and then I'm gonna give it its name. So in this case here, it's gonna be US, because this is a US radio button. And then just click on connect. You'll see a dot appear. I also wanna do the same for the Euro. Click on it, hold down control, drag up and put it underneath the US. So once again, same naming convention, R, B, T, N, radio button, and then this is gonna be Euro. And click on enter. So I've created my two little outlets. So now what I wanna be able to do is create a little function that's gonna switch between the selected and unselected. 
To do that, I need to create a function. So I'm just going to select the US dollar one, and it needs to go after the closing of the view did load. I'm going to click once again, hold down control, drag across. And its type this time is going to be a UI button. And I need to give it a name. Its name is going to be radio button again, R, B, T, N. But this time it's going to be the action. Because what we're going to be looking for is not the individual button, but we're going to look at the tags. So this one was tagged as one and this one was tagged as two. And we're going to click on connect. This will give us a function now. Once we've got our function, we can then start writing some code in here. So I'm going to press enter and move that down. And we're going to use an if statement because when we click on this button, it's going to call this function and the sender is going to send us some information. It's going to send us all the information about the button, including its tag. So what I want to have a look at is if the sender, so whoever was clicked, if it's tag, so I want to particularly look at its tag and say if that's equal to one, then I know I've actually clicked on the US. So I'm just going to press enter and open and close some braces. So if you click on this, it will pass all its information through. And if it's tag is one, I want to do something. What do I actually want to do? Well, it's quite simple. I'm going to change its state. So I'm going to go radio button, RBTN, and I want to select the US one. Well, what I want, what do I want to do? Well, if it is selected, I want to change it to true. So in other words, I want it to change its state to selected. So it should go from not selected to selected the same way we tick the little checkbox back in its properties. But for the Euro, we want to do the opposite. We don't want that to be selected. So we're going to tell that if it is selected to be equal to false. So it should be in its default state. Now at the moment when I click on the dot here, you notice it's only looking at the US button. It's not looking for Euro. So how is it going to know that this one was selected? Well, what we need to do is click on this dot and when it turns to a plus, drag it down to this object here, BTN Euro. So now when we highlight the dot, you notice that both are highlighted. So both are now connected to this function. So therefore, it doesn't matter which one is selected, it will call this function. It will look at the tag from the sender, and if it was one that was clicked, it's going to turn this one to true and change its state to selected, and the second one to false because it wasn't selected. So let's have a look at this working. When I click on US, it's now got a dot in it. But Euro doesn't do anything at the moment. But US now has a dot because it's selected. So now when I select Euro, I want to turn this back to false and this one to true. So let's go do that. So I'm going to stop the simulation. And to do that, we're going to use the else statement. We're going to go else if the sender tag, and this time if the sender tag is equal to two. What do we want to do? Well, we're going to do what we did before, but the opposite. So I'm just going to copy these down. And I'll change this one to false. And this one to true. So let's test the program now. If I click US, it's got the selection. If I click Euro, this now has selection. So now we've actually got radio buttons working. Now, if there's going to be a third one, all I need to do is copy this down, move them into place. Just remember to update, reset to suggested constraints. I'm just going to change Euro now to pound. And the last thing I need to do is change its tag to three and then associate that with the same function by clicking and dragging back to the pound. So now this is also associated with this function. 
I also need to create an outlet. So once again, hold down control, drag up to the outlets. It's then going to be called RBTN pound and make a connection. To get it to work, I could then go in here and go RBTN pound dot is selected equals false. And then once again in the second one, because it's not selected, it would then be selected. If I want it to then become true, I copy this all the way down to the bottom, paste it. So if it's not one, if it's not two, and it's three, then I want this one to be false. And I would like the pound to be true. Now just to test our program, We can now select US, we can select pound or euro, and we can cycle through all the different states of this program. Now, if you wanted to do the calculations for the conversions, all you've got to do is put them inside these little brace, open and close braces in here. So I hope you found this tutorial very useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also have a look around my YouTube channel for other useful Xcode tutorials. And I wish you all the best in creating your currency converter.